Here's a look at a whole field of an invasive herbaceous plant uh, in our lower Hudson Prism region called Chinese bush clover. Chinese bush clover was brought over to the U.S. in 1899 uh, for erosion control and for slope stabilization as well as a livestock feed. But you can see it's expanded its distribution. It can grow in really, really dense uh, clusters. Uh, basically outcompeting a lot of the native species that would be growing in meadows like the one I am in here. And you can see it's just a complete monoculture of Chinese bush clover. Um, one of the things that you can look for as you're walking through meadows to see if you see Chinese bush clover is sort of that silvery cast it gives off. You see how it's gonna have that ghost-like appearance or silver whitish cast to it? That's because it's got hairy and silvery undersides to its leaves, which we'll take a closer look at in a second. If you look at the, this one that I'm holding here, it's about three feet off the ground and almost has like a, remember in high school, you know, chemistry, uh, test tube brush cleaners, it almost has that look to it. You see how the leaves are pointing up and almost like a, a test tube cleaner appearance to it. Um, it is really, really persistent and difficult to get rid of because it's got a deep taproot system. Its seeds, as you can see some of them here, can also be um, viable in the soil for up to 20 years. So very, very persistent in the environment. And so makes early detection and reporting even that much more important. Or you get a situation like you see here, whole fields of Chinese bush clover just completely smothering out any native vegetation trying to grow. So let's take a closer look at some of the key characteristics that define this species and how it differs from some of its native lookalikes. Here's a closer look at the flowers of Chinese bush clover. And you can see that it's starting to have a yellowish appearance to it. Um, this is the end of September, but if you were at the, uh, towards the end of August or so, you'd start to see that they're a little bit whiter, but now they're turning yellowish. And you can see at the middle of that flower, it's a little bit of a purplish hue. So purplish at the center of that flower uh, petal. Um, and kind of turning a yellowish, especially as we get into the fall time here. And you can see some of the flowers in the background, that purple really jumping out at you as well. Here is a look at a leaf of Chinese bush clover. Now this whole thing that you're looking at right now is actually a leaf. It's a compound leaf, meaning that it's broken down into three different leaflets. And you can see that the middle leaflet is actually a little bit longer than the ones that are flanking it on either side here. So that's one key feature to look for. And the other one is if you look at the tips of the leaflets, right? You see how it's got a little pointed bristled tip at the end? Well, a lot of the lookalikes like slender bush clover do not have that tip. Also slender bush clover will have more purplish flowers than the flowers that I just showed you there, which are primarily whitish or turn yellowish with a little bit of a purple center versus the slender bush clover has generally purpler, I guess you could say flowers. And uh, it's really this like the tip of each of the leaflets that's really key. It's also important to notice that you see how long each of those leaf stalks are with some of the other lookalikes don't have that length to each of that leaf stalk. So you see the base where my thumb is there. It's a pretty extended leaf stalk to get to each of those leaflets there. You'll also notice that the leaves are coming off of the stem here. There, see how they're alternating? So they're not actually coming out opposite of one another, but they're alternating along the stem. So that's just another thing to look for. Each of the leaves are gonna be slightly pointed upward and again, giving that sort of like, that um, test tube brush cleaner appearance to it, as you can see here. So just, a, just some key features and how to tell it apart from some of the lookalikes. And, and again, look for that like whitish silvery cast to it uh, as it's in this meadow here. That's another key feature. Here's actually a look at a couple of different lookalikes to Chinese bush clover. If you come down here, let's start with this one here because it's actually very similar characteristics to Chinese bush clover, but in fact is in the genus of wild indigos. And one of the reasons why we don't know, or we know that this is not Chinese bush clover, has to do with the tips of the leaves. You see how on this, yes, it comes in three leaflets and they all kind of join at the middle where my thumb is there but there's none, there's not that sharp bristle at the end of this. 
So even though the, the leaf structure and the leaflet structure is very similar to Chinese bush clover, this is actually different. It does not have that characteristic look to it. And if you also look, um, there isn't that long leaf stalk, right? So you see how in bush clover, there was that long leaf stalk connecting to the stem, but here it almost comes right to the base of it. So that's how we know we're not looking at a Chinese bush clover, but instead something else. Right next to it, we also have mugwort. Common mugwort tends to grow in meadows where there is a, uh, you know, they might find Chinese bush clover as well. But you can see how the flowers of this are more like reddish brown versus that like white and yellowish um, and then purple of the flowers of uh, Chinese bush clover. So that's another key characteristic. Also, if you look at the the leaves on mugwort it's it's just a much different structure much more elongated you can really see the veins actually quite well in mugwort as well so you know that you're not looking at chinese bush clover here and certainly doesn't come in those pairs of three leaflets as well and the flowers very much different so just a couple of different ways and other things that you might see um, in fields of chinese bush clover but are in fact not chinese bush clover